Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. And the other thing is, uh, if you have a, a, a goal for meditation, when you sit down and you're ex- expecting some kind of thoughtless experience to happen, then when it doesn't happen, you'll think you did it wrong. And then you won't want to do it again. But some of the most successful meditation sessions can be when you sit and your mind is racing. Hi, it's Joseph, and thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. I'm so excited about this week's episode because I love blowing people's minds, and this subject is low-hanging fruit for a fast transformation. I'm talking about meditation. Meditation becomes more popular every day in the Western world, even in business settings. But like so many spiritual teachings that become popular, there's a dramatic misunderstanding that can severely limit the practice. Sadly, many meditators can waste years, literally, not knowing this simple but commonly unappreciated principle that will change your meditation practice forever, or if you don't already have a meditation practice, help you get started on the right foot in a way that will actually work. Let's join the conversation from a recent leader webcast. Here we go. I saw this. Uh, I posted on, uh, on on Facebook. I should post it in the in the private group. Um, I heard Tony, it was this little three minute video where Tony Robbins is talking about his uh, his morning and uh, talking about gratitude, which is great. Gratitude is cool. Um, but he said something about meditation that scared the shit out of me. Um, he said, "You know, a lot of people meditate or something like that." And he's like, "I don't. I don't have time for that." Um, and you know, not thinking. I don't even know if I want to not think. And I went, "Ah." Tony Robbins is a hugely intelligent, hugely influential, influential guy, and he just got meditation dead wrong. And this, it makes me quite upset because there are a lot of people who meditate out there who think it's about not thinking. And this is the worst kind of self-sabotage there is. It's not about not thinking. Not thinking is a potential result, but not the goal. If your goal is not thinking, you're doing it wrong. This is hard for the Western mind to get. The goal is to simply shift the center of your awareness from thinking to somewhere else. That's different than not thinking. In the meditation, uh, some meditation communities, they'll, they'll, they'll talk about it as the difference between thinking and thinking about not thinking. Many meditators are doing thinking about not thinking. They're trying to stop their thinking. That doesn't work. It's a complete and total waste of time. It can improve your focus maybe, but it doesn't, doesn't do what we're talking about here. So it's about identifying with something other than thinking. What else is happening besides thinking? That's different than stop thinking. Oh, I'm thinking again, damn it. That's trying to stop thinking. Oh, there's a bird. Oh, my hands are warm. Oh, my leg is falling asleep. Oh, my heart feels uncomfortable. That's what else is happening besides thinking. And then a thought comes. Oh, there's a thought. Oh, there's a bird. What else is happening besides thinking? That's different. If you try to shut down thinking, you're resisting your mind and what you resist persists. You hold it in place that way. It will win because you're invoking it as a battle. And the other thing is, uh, if you have a, a, a goal for meditation, when you sit down and you're ex- expecting some kind of thoughtless experience to happen, then when it doesn't happen, you'll think you did it wrong. And then you won't want to do it again. But some of the most successful meditation sessions can be when you sit and your mind is racing. Because every time you move from the racing mind to something besides thinking, it's like you've done a repetition, re- repetition with some weight. I remember once, uh, it was in the middle of the night, my mind was racing and uh, it was keeping me up. So I was, a part of me was annoyed. So I started meditating and I was getting annoyed because I couldn't even count. I was counting just because I was tired. So it was a good way to focus. I was counting to 10 and I couldn't count past four without losing count. That's how fast my 
mind was racing. And I was frustrated by that. I was like, oh man, my mind is racing. And I was like, oh wait, now that's resisting thought. I'm trying to stop thinking. And then I said, okay, so every time I catch my mind racing and I return to counting, that's like a repetition. So it makes me stronger every time because I'm practicing here. Okay, mind, race all you want. You're just giving me more practice. And then in that moment, my mind completely went blank. Now, that doesn't happen every time, but it was really interesting to see what happened there. I dropped my resistance to mind and it just let go. Now, that doesn't work as a trick. It's sort of like how washing your car to make it rain doesn't work. <laughs> but a, a good illustration. It's happened a couple of times like that. Well, you surrendered. That's, yeah. that's the trick. Exactly. Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage, the clear and open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. Until then, know that Clear and Open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Be sure to visit clearandopen.com for the latest tools, articles, and free resources to help you on your journey. Thanks for listening and bye for now.